There's a Sardinia where nature and history fuse, often coinciding, a land ready to be discovered among the folds of a landscape now soft, now sharp, irregular like its mountains. Increasing numbers of tourists head towards the interior to appreciate the island's strong savior in search of the spirit of the places. Indeed, because it's among the limestone blocks of Oliastra, undisputed kingdom of the Movras, wild sheep, and the ancient forests that have escaped felling by the charcoal burners, that the beat of the Sardinian hut can be heard. Braudel, illustrious historian of Mediterranean culture, wrote that in Sardinia, the mountain is responsible for isolation as much as, or perhaps even more, than the sea. Here in the interior, even the legions of civilized Rome paused and stopped, impossible to reason with the proud shepherd people. So the Romans baptized this proud land, Barbary. Today, the future of the region's tourism lies in the sea mountain direction, following the lines of the emigration of the shepherds descending from the mountains to look for more fertile pastures. Those who look with greater care can discover a different Sardinia that keeps its natural heritage intact. The island vaunts the greatest concentration of Italian wetlands, the oasis of pink flamingos, but also of groundsel herons, sultan chickens, and swamp falcons, a peaceful reserve for the lovers of nature. Everywhere, a myrtle and mastic perfumed scrubland, the habitat of the Sardinian deer up to two years ago threatened with extinction, but now free to wander around in the protected zones, the last wild areas of the island under protection. Dreamlike places such as the island of Azinara, populated by the white ass and dominated by its super prison in disuse. And how not to mention amazed by the protected marine area of Tavolara, Horsetail Cape, fascinating with its limestone cliffs, inviting subs to discover submerged wrecks and extremely colorful aquatic fauna. From the sea to the mountain then, along the reverse path, returning inland because of a magnetic attraction, exploring mountain landscapes softened by the colors of wild flowers that grow everywhere, even among the stones of the dry walls of the shepherd's folds. The mute territory opens out unexpected glimpses along the waters of the Flumendoza, the Molarge, and the Is Barocus. This is the Sardinia of the lakes, among hills and fjords, ideal for the excursionist on horseback or by bicycle, perhaps to reach the nearby Nugarache sites, from Santa Vittoria to Arubio. The further you go in, the greater is the impression that the territory has remained inaccessible. Above the slopes of the Supramonte, the region offers nature excursions of incomparable beauty to the tourist. The karstic source of the Su Gologone surprises the visitor with the flow of extremely limpid water that erupts with force from a cavity in the rock. A powerful gush, just think 300 liters a second, that comes up from the bowels of the mountain to then flow into an extremely limpid underground lake. Further on, the Lana Itu Valley opens out, rich with paths that make the lovers of trekking and potholers happy. A place without equal that makes its way through deep gorges and limestone bastions covered with funnels and craters. 
Here, in Lana Ito, the entrances to a number of evocative grottos open. Saoke, the voice, where the underground waters can be heard talking, and Subentu, the wind, perhaps the longest cavity in Italy. Triscoli, beyond the Lana Ito Valley, is perched on a steep slope, clinging to a limestone ridge. Among the contos, stories about the place, there's one that goes back to the island's remote past. When a strange people of giant Nuraga inhabited this stretch of hidden land, so the legend goes, Tiscali was the last refuge of men all with three eyes, one of which in the neck and four arms. The small village built in the Nuraga epoch, invisible and difficult to reach, was our Sardinian Avalon, perhaps the last bulwark of the Barbary populations against the Roman invasion. This is archaic Sardinia, revealed in all its complexity. This is history written in stone, the dolmens of megalithic cults, the tombs of the giants, and the home of the Janus, the homes of the witches, according to folk tradition, the funeral places of prehistoric Sardinia for archaeologists. Everywhere you can stumble over mysterious sentries guarding the territory, square and paddle pipe towers built mainly on the heights. They are the Nuragi, the icon of the Sardinian landscape. There are about 7,000 on the island, one for every square kilometer, and they're the witnesses to the Nuragi civilization that still maintains its secrets intact. Filled with unresolved enigmas, Nuragi fascinate tourists and experts who are still asking what the purpose was of these constructions built 4,000 years ago. Were they military fortresses, or did they rather have a religious function? Perhaps they were used as funeral monuments or as houses. The question is still debated after centuries of research. History and archaeology then, but also relaxation in the townships of the interior. Many places to visit, there's only the problem, choice. In programming the visit, a tour around rural architecture and paved historical centers, country churches and protest murals is not to be missed. The sea is not everything in Sardinia, but only the ultimate attraction of the holiday market. The centers of the interior areas offer the visitor new forms of hospitality. The tourist becomes a guest, indeed at home, thanks to the dislocated hotels built in the interior hamlets, in houses furnished with the colors and materials of typical Sardinian tradition. But there's no time to pause. We must journey on, see, understand. And whoever sets out to understand sees that Sardinia has an ancient heart. It can be felt wandering enraptured among the contrasts of the Valley of the Moon, 
where the petrified forest blends into the landscape of the by now familiar wind energy blades. Imagine a country like this, completely different, arid like the moon, but that has perhaps another face that men have never seen, another sense of time, a different rhythm. The word of Giuseppe Desi, one of the Sardinian writers who has seen in his native land an inspirational muse for a lifetime's work. And following the literary suggestions of Giuseppe Desi and the poet D'Annunzio, who dedicated to the Sa Spendula Falls the extremely well-known sonnet of the same name, you can dedicate a few days to the discovery of the Villa Cidro territory by hiring a mountain bike or putting on a pair of trekking shoes. On Monte Arquinto, they say that the Kogas, witches who crave human blood, above all the blood of children not yet baptized, still live here. Folk legends handed down in the stories of the old, stories of a past that have to deal with modernity. Time, winning an impossible wager, seems to have stopped running here on the Jara de Iscuadedos, the small and agile wild horses imported, some say, by the Punic people. Still on the Jara di Gestori, history returns, claiming its space with the Nuraga Sanctuary of Santa Vittoria, defined by the great Sardinian archaeologist Giovanni Liliu, one of the most important, fascinating and evocative monuments of Nuraga civilization. But the interior areas are also mining lands on the southwest of the island. Kilometers of tunnels and galleries run here through the belly of the earth. On the surface, after crossing a desert of sand, agate and myrtle, we come to the abandoned remains of the silver galleries, an extraordinary cultural heritage that retraces the steps of the economic development of the island. It's difficult to forget the true Sardinia, the island that still survives mass tourism, a generous land that holds the visitor in an unforgettable embrace. <laughs>